Andrew, let's talk about the big announcement from earlier this week. Okay. I am running for Congress. Yay! (laughs) My new free state of Florida in what is uh, Palm Beach County, District 22, against an incumbent that has been there forever, Lois Frankel, best friend of Nancy Pelosi. And we have to get through a primary first, obviously, but um, we're going to try to save the world by by getting political here this is great i mean this this is the true battlefront probably highest impact role somebody could yeah. play um it's just throwing your hat in the ring so was this a slow crescendo build to doing this or did you just kind of hit a wall and say this is this is the only option for me i think yeah that's a good question i think you know since my letter went viral, and this is almost exactly two years ago now, you know, people had whispered the word politics in my ear. And I, I thought about doing it in New York. Um, it, it's it's impossible. I think, you know, running as a Republican in New York, I thought about running as an independent in New York. It, it's not going to happen. And we moved down here to Florida last summer. And, you know, I thought about getting involved politically. Um, and then it sort of happened pretty quickly that people said, oh, you know, you should run for Congress. And I said, yeah, 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 maybe someday, sure, whatever. And they said, no, you should really run. And they started introducing me to a lot of people down here. And, you know, Palm Beach County has become sort of the Republican fundraising capital of the world. It is, of course, home to Mar-a-Lago and Donald Trump. Ron DeSantis is here all the time, as is almost every Republican candidate, you know, doing fundraisers uh, in Palm Beach. And so I started to get introduced to a lot of people, some of the local uh, party people, Republican Party people in Palm Beach County, and it kind of just snowballed. And uh, and we said, you know what, we, we have to try to do this. Uh, I, you know, I thought we needed a grassroots movement and we needed this parents movement. And, and I think mm-hmm. it's it's done a lot of good work. You know, you and I have been part of it. We know so many people who have been part of it. So many of our guests on this show have been part of that grassroots parents movement. Um, but if we're going to solve these problems, if we're going to win the culture war, I think it's going to have to happen politically. You know, yes, we need the movement. Um, yes, we need people running for school board. We need people fighting at the local level. We need people fighting at the state level and state legislatures. We need the governors on board. But a lot of this is going to have to happen top down at the federal level, getting the money out, uh, stopping the DEI regime. And so I said, you know what, I'm, I'd am i be one of what, you know, one of 435. I don't think a lot of people in our government and especially in our federal government fundamentally understand these issues that you and I talk about every week. They don't understand what's happening in education. They don't fundamentally understand the cultural war. They don't understand that this is really a fight for America's founding values and is really a fight for Western civilization. And we need people in our government that can educate and that can fight for that. And I'm going to try. Well, I was just going to ask, why are you running? And I think you just answered that. So where where can people find out more information on your campaign? Yeah, we just launched a website. It's andrewgutman.com. Uh, for those of you that that uh, don't know how to spell it, it's G-U-T-M-A-N-N, one T, two Ns, although I own all the other variations, so it should forward <laughs> so to, find to that it. site. But yeah, I you know, it, we it's I go through some of the issues. Obviously, the big you know, the biggest issues that I want to focus on are the education issues, sure, on parental rights. And on winning the culture war. Uh, mm-hmm. But I also talk a lot about economics. Uh, I started my career at the Federal Reserve. I was an investment banker for a while. I wrote a textbook on investment banking. Are you uh, a fiscal switched... conservative, would you say? Yeah, I am. I am a enormous proponent of free markets. Uh, I am very critical of the Federal Reserve. I just I think we talked about that on a, on a recent episode. I wrote a piece very critical of the Federal Reserve. I think that uh, it, the too much easy money. The woke, the, a lot of the woke issues have money at its root, and I think monetary policy is a big part of that. So, so that's it. And and yeah, I think we need less government, a lot less government. Um, so that's certainly some of the things that that I believe in. Uh, you know, I talk about a lot of the other issues too. And I think where I live now, um, and in the district of representing West Palm Beach, has the opportunity to be the financial capital of the United States. There's an enormous amount of financial services firms that are moving down from New York. Why? For the same reason I moved down from New York. Uh, the deteriorating aspect of you know progressive mismanagement of our big cities. 
um, you know, Midtown is still empty, tax situation, crime, quality of life. And so you have a lot of firms moving down. And I think there's an opportunity, you know, South Florida is booming. Mm -hmm. And so that's exciting. Did you said this is winnable? You're doing this because you well, I'm not doing it to lose. No, <laughs> you know what I mean. Bad, Did you look at the a, numbers? Like the votes oh, yeah, are there, yeah. and it's a it's a you know fairly borderline race because it's currently held by a Democrat. The seat's currently held by a Democrat, right? That's right. She's an incumbent that's been there been there a long time. Um, it's not easy. It, it's it's not easy. It, it's still a Democratic district. DeSantis in the last election in 22, when he won Florida by about 19 points, he won the county for the first time a Republican has won in decades. He came very close to winning this district. Uh, so we think that this is doable. This is winnable. Republicans have never had a viable candidate here, not for a very, very, very long time. And the sense is that I am that viable candidate. It's about 30 percent independence. I think I can appeal to the independents. I think I can cross over a little bit to the Democrats. Um, it's it's a lot. Of, it's a very heavily Jewish district. It's one of the most Jewish districts in the country. Um, so that helps on you know, being Jewish. Um, they are very pro-Israel, different than a lot of Jews in the Northeast mm-hmm. that have become not pro-Israel. Um, right. And so, yeah, there's a lot of work to do, but this is winnable. And I'm not doing this, you know, for any other reason then I think we can win this and I think we can I can represent the district and I can represent you know all the parents out there and grandparents that we, that we talk to that we are fighting for and fighting to fix education I hope to you know represent them and I, and I want to say one other thing which is I I hope other members of other accidental activists as we call ourselves will think of doing the same thing I know some of them have thought about or have run for school board uh, and have run for other things. But we need more of us that are willing to jump in and and, you know, run for political office. 